everyone, it's Kerri Ann and I'm in the art studio again today. Um, I'm working on some more watercolour Christmas ideas, quick and easy ideas in watercolour that you can create at home um, for some fun or to make Christmas cards. Um, so this one here is going to be a sort of rough snowman design. Um, so have a look, let's get started, let's see what we can do. Um, obviously this is just how I work, there's lots of different artists that work in lots of different ways. Um, so please don't take this as the only way you can work, you can work in lots of different ways. This is the style I like to work in and this is how I like to paint. So let's get started. So if I spin you down again, here we are. Um, so what I'm going to do for this one is just give myself um, a rough sketch line of, of what I'm going to do. So you'll notice that I really, really don't want to get the exact shape and I'm not pressing very hard at all. In fact, you might not even be able to see um, the, the markings on the paper, but I can see the rough lines. And what I'm doing is I'm giving myself um, a, a sort of a shape, a rough shape of what I'm going to work in and work on. Um, what I don't want to be doing is making any sh harsh lines um, that then are going to be seen through the watercolour. So I work with um, no particular straight lines, I work really rough, really light, just scraping out the design essentially, just really sketchy, sketchy, um, keeping it nice and loose and sketched out. Okay, so once I'm then happy with the design, I start to look at the brushes that I want to use and what sizes I'm going to want to work in. So for this particular um, loose watercolour snowman, I'm actually going to start working with these number six round. Um, and I'm going to start by doing the shading um, and that's going to sort of showcase where the snowman is. Now obviously with the snowman, um, on white on white, you aren't going to actually see it if I try to paint the snowman. So I'm not going to paint the snowman as such, rather I'm going to create the shadow effects um, that will give an idea that a snowman is there. So I'm actually just starting with some Payne's Grey and I'm just put a tiny amount on the page then with the rest I'm just moving it around. So this is just to give me the idea that there is some snow and that Mr Snowman is actually on the snow. Okay, So this is how I get that, that effect that the snow is there without when I'm working obviously on wet on wet um, and white on white. Um, this is without having to use a, a white gouache, for example, which is another way that I could do it. Okay, so I've got the shadowy um, effect of the snow underneath now. So then I'm going to pick up um, with a, a wet brush a little bit more of the Payne's Grey, and I'm just going to shadow the snowman in here. Now I've used a tiny bit, and now I'm going to take off the um, colour with a uh, the water and I'm going back on simply with a wet brush okay I'm not using any more than that tiny amount that I used there now I'm using just a wet brush to pull this Payne's grey around because I don't want very much of it there I'm just creating shadow okay so I'm actually going to use the same part of it up here and I'm going to move it to create that shadow of his head here so I'm now going to take a tiny bit more. You'll see, can you see that drop in? A very tiny amount and I'm just coming underneath his hat or where his hat will be and I'm just then moving it around. Now where there's going to be no real colour, I'm still going over it with a wet brush. And I do this just so that the, um, the edges are loose and not harsh. So by using a wet brush against the Payne's Grey, it blends that Payne's Grey into the wet, um, which gives me a less harsh edge. Okay, so that's why I'm doing that. So I'm pulling that there around like so. So what I need before I can do the next step on the snowman is for this to solidly dry. Whilst that's doing that, I'm gonna actually come up and start working on the hat. So for the hat, I actually do want to use the Payne's Grey again, but I'm using it much darker, much heavier, loading up the brush much more. I'm going to start at the top, and that's so that I can control how much I bring down here, but also so it gives more chance of that to dry down there. So with the Payne's Grey, I'm going to just start striping it from the side here. I'm going to create that side edge, and then I'm going to start striping it. But I'm actually going to try and leave some white mark spaces, and that's just to create the... Um, the effect that I want to create. So I'm going to bring down here the edge of the hat. You'll notice it will start to blend now with that water that's on his head there. So I'm 
just going to bring the hat edge out further here. So can you see the water spreading slightly down there? I'm not too worried. This is a loose watercolour snowman, so I'm not too worried. But I am going to do my second darker layer when that's slightly more dry. So what I'm doing now is I'm wetting the brush and I'm going to bring it back in from this side. I'm going to create the edge that I want. And then I'm going to start moving it around. So on the top of his hat, I'm going to leave a slight space on the top of his hat, slightly white there. So this is where I'm going to come back in now and start dropping that level of colour that I want in. So I'm bringing now in that, that dark the layer of the Payne's Grey. And I'm dropping it in on the wet so it is going to move around. Just remember when you're working wet on wet it is going to move. So I'm just dropping it in. I want a little bit less white here, so I'm just going to start filling that gap. There we go. And just dropping in the black here. I'm going to define the hat slightly. Although this is a loose watercolour snowman, I want a little bit of definition up here on his hat. So I'm creating those edges. There we go. Fantastic. So, oh, we've got some happy accident hat there where it makes it slightly looser on the edge. So let's do a similar effect over here. The brush getting in the way there, rolling onto the page. But that's okay, we're going to pull it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, to stick with the loose watercolour, I'm actually going to tap on some specks here. Now don't worry, if you get a speck that happens to go in a place you don't want it, you can lift it out with your tissue, okay? So I've done the blue, uh, the Payne's Grey specks at the top, which sort of relate slightly to the hat, and I'm going to do that with now um, a pale blue. But what I am going to have to do is clean this palette part out, I think, because it's got lots and lots of different colours in it at the moment. So I'm going to probably clean it out before I use the bluey shade. I'm just going to clean this palette part out and then I can use the shade of blue that I want to use. So I'm going to drop a bit of the blue in there, but I am going to add a tiny bit of Payne's Grey to it just because I just want it to tone well with the, um, with the Payne's Grey that's already on the page. So I'm going to use this to create some snowflake effects. So by dropping in the blue, it gives me that effect. And then I'm going to come and pick up any blue that I didn't want on here with my piece of tissue. This also gives me the opportunity to find out where it's dry so that I can then start working on the scarf that I want him to have. Because he's going to have a scarf. Okay. So I'm just taking any of the excess black that I don't want on here. There we go. So he's looking nice and characterful up here. So dry brush. I'm just softening off the area that's gone up here. So just remember this is my nice loose watercolour snowman. And starting to appear there for me. So I've got my specks of blue hitting the page. Any that stay too rigid down here, just dab over with some water. They'll soon loosen up. It's just where the page was dry and I want them to be looser down here. I want them to stay like that up there, but I want them looser down here. Just looks like the melted snowflakes at the bottom there. There we go. Okay, so this should be slightly dry now. I would, if I was working on this as a piece that I wanted to photocopy, I'd probably give it longer. But as we are on a video tutorial, let's 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 go for it. Let's <laughs> let's risk it. Let's see what we can do. 
I mean, what we could do whilst we, just to give it a couple more seconds, is just bring in a little holly leaf hat for him. Now, if you've got a smaller brush, this might be the opportunity to get yourself a smaller brush um, if you've got one to hand. So I'm just putting a, um, a holly leaf here and here. Really loose holly leaf. I'm going to pick up the red for a berry and I'm just going to pop down the red here. And then if that escapes the way it has here, quickly lift it back up. We don't want that amount on there, do we? We're going to have to come back and fix that. So that's because I put too much of a larger drop. So if that happens, never ever worry. It happens to us all. You can lift it all back off. You haven't ruined the piece. Lift it back off and repair it. So let's start by repairing the hat, which I'm going to strike in the grey. There we go. Strike in the grey. Let's put back. those holly leaves and we'll wait for the berries in a second so whilst I've messed around with that and repaired my hat I should now be dry enough to go on and put his nose so we need a nice orange for the nose so I'm loading the brush up with a nice orange now and for the nose I'm going to try and again keep it nice and loose um, so he's going to have a carrot nose, a nice loose carrot nose, so I'm going to keep it wiggly coming out to a point. There we go, so he's got his nice carrot nose. And let's give him a scarf, um, what colour should we give him a scarf? Should we go for a blue scarf again? Should we go for a bright blue? So if we're going for the scarf, I'm going to have his scarf starting down here. Now thankfully it is nice and dry. So I can pull the scarf up to the top. I'm going to give the scarf a part there and then I'm going to reload and start bringing the scarf around his neck so that he's got a nice winter scarf coming around here and then his other part of the scarf is going to come out on this side so it looks like it's tied into a not just here. To do that I'm going to add a different shade of blue next to this one here. And I'm just going to drop in a solid area of the different shade there and then start to bring it in onto the scarf itself as well so that it blends. So we're just dropping in strikes of the other shade of blue but it's actually more solid here to give the impression that it's been tied there. But let's drop in some more of the blue up here and some of it over this way as well. So my loose watercolour snowman is appearing. Hopefully you can see him coming to life now. So if I want the hat to be slightly darker, I can still, whilst it's wet, bring in a little bit more. There we go, and I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it and start putting the buttons on. Now please if you're doing this at home don't put your buttons and eyes on until the very end. I'm going to do this because I'm rushing to get this video finished for you. So I'm going to do three buttons here. One, two, three. And then I'm going to have two little eyes. One, there we have it, my loose watercolour snowman. Now, obviously there's lots more things that you could do. I'm going to drop in 
these tiny little berries. I would do them much larger if I wasn't worried they were going to... Ah, oh, look at that, every time. <laughs> I, that was a drop of water on the brush, that was a slightly different issue that time. So let's bring back the... But this is a good, a good chance for you to see that just because something goes slightly wrong, you don't give up. You can repair it, especially when you're working in loose watercolour, okay? So if you get drops on the brush, that's a good idea is to take them off because they will affect your work. Let's repair this area here. Stop the flow of water. And then we can start repairing it by moving that back over, creating that edge where we want it. His hat strides along there. Drop the black back in to give it shape. Can you see that droplet on the brush? You mustn't mustn't work with those on the brush because you'll have lots of accidents like we. But we can repair them, okay? Especially when you're working in your loose watercolour. Please, please do not give up on your work if it doesn't go quite to plan. Okay, loose watercolour is very forgiving. So I shall turn this one around carefully and show you my loose watercolour snowman. So here he is, my happy little snowman. Okay, and here is one of the ones that I did quite a while ago. I possibly did a video on this one a couple of years ago, um, but um, if not, uh, this is one of the snowmen that I turned into a card and is one of my best selling snowmen at Christmas time. Um, people seem to love the loose watercolour style, so there's the one I did a couple of years ago, and here's a version of him now. Alright, so just a really loose, fun watercolour snowman um, that you can do at home. And lots of ways of fixing your watercolour when they go wrong as well, so <laughs> just remember guys that uh, the art is about having fun, okay? In, and when you're doing your watercolour work, don't be so judgy about your work. I have a lot of students that worry at every stroke that goes wrong, they need to change the page and do something different. You can fix most mistakes in watercolour and you can fix them all when you're doing loose watercolour like we do here um, with the illustrations and loose watercolour Christmas bits and pieces. So please, please, please don't give up on your work. Keep working on it and find ways to fix it. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video and um, I've inspired you to get started on some watercolour Christmas cards. I hope you're having a really good week. Take care. Bye.